Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you why you need an ND filter. It doesn't matter if you're a photographer or a filmmaker, in this video I'll show you why it's necessary to have an ND filter at all times. But why is it so important? First of all, let's speak about filmmaking. If you take, for instance, a video clip using 1080p, that's the resolution, so if you record yourself with 30 frames per second, you need to take a 60 of a shutter speed. If you film yourself in 4K50, you need to take a 100 of a shutter speed. If you film yourself in Full HD using 100 frames per second, you need to take a 200 of a second shutter speed. So you always double the shutter speed, then you have frames per second on your video. Otherwise, your footage may look quite weird. And you see that especially on moving subjects. If you film a building without any moving parts in the background, it doesn't matter if you film that building, uh, with a 500 of a second or a 200 of a second, but for moving subjects it's important to use the correct shutter speed. I'm here just behind the Cologne Bonn airport, it's called Warneheide, as you can see it's a big field and Germany has been really great for the last past months and today is one of these sunny days where I went out with my Canon EOS R3 and the 50mm 1.2 with its wide aperture as you can see when I close it it looks like this once I open it a lot of light comes in and here is when the ND filter comes in handy. I would like to take a video now in 4k using 50 frames per second so that means I require a shutter speed of a hundred of a second and I'll show you what's gonna happen if I would open the aperture so I would like to have either a blur for or a blur background that means the image is totally overexposed. I can't change the shutter speed since I require a hundred of a shutter speed. I won't change the aperture now because I want to have a blur background and the ISO is already at 100 because it doesn't get lower. So what can I do? You need something like this. That is an ND filter. And once you purchase any of these ND filters, make sure you get the correct filter thread because otherwise those filters won't fit onto your lens. And what this uh, filter does, it basically steals your lens some light. I still have the same settings and let me show you what's going to happen if I put this ND filter in front of my lens. It looks almost underexposed with a 1.2 aperture in bright daylight. As you can see I have now two ND filters in front of me. They are both made for the 77mm filter thread but they are different. The upper one says ND64 while the lower one says ND16. That means that the upper one lets less light through while the lower one lets more light through. So make sure to get the correct one. That's the 50mm 1.2 but at the moment I'm filming myself with an aperture of f8. Eight. However, I didn't get a lens for 2500 bucks to film myself with an aperture of f8. I want to film myself with an aperture of 1.2 to get that blurry background. So how is that possible? Using an ND filter. Here are the same settings and let me open now the aperture to 1.2. And as you can see, now the background is blurred out but I'm a little bit overexposed because I'm using only the lowest ND filter available for this lens that I have here in my bag. So let me turn down the aperture a little bit to 1.8 and as you can see now I'm completely separated from the background while well, you can still, still see that there is a tree but I'm sharp and the background isn't. So that's why it's important for filmmakers to use an ND filter during daylight to film something that requires the separation from either the fore or the background with an open aperture. As you can see here, I isolated completely the leaf from the background here on the tree using a 1.8 aperture. And that's one thing which looks so nice using a lens with a fast aperture for filming and an ND filter, of course. Same camera, same lens. However, I switched into photo mode. I'm using now a shutter speed of a 250 of a second, aperture 1.2, ISO 100. And that's how a picture looks like using an ND filter. And let me take off the filter very quick. Here are the same settings without the ND filter. Let me show you what shutter speed you require to get the same photo. As you can see, a fifth thousand of a second using 1.2 aperture and ISO 100 at this time of the day. And one more reason to get an ND filter for filmmakers is if you would like to film yourself. 
I'm still filming myself now with a 16 millimeter, but I have now an aperture of f4 instead of 11. So the background is not as sharp as of the beginning of this review or tutorial. And that's especially important once you film yourself where a lot of people are and you don't want to show their faces. You require a D filter to film yourself to separate from the fore or the background. I'm standing here in front of a German Autobahn, so a lot of cars are passing by. And I don't want to see any of these cars on my photo during daylight. That's quite impossible to see the A3 without any cars. So I'm using now two ND filters on the 50 millimeter. I'm exposing the image for 30 seconds using an aperture of like 4 or 5.6, ISO 100 to 500 and let's see what the outcome is. Here's the Canon EOS R3 using the 24 to 105 millimeter and that's a river and I don't want to see any small waves inside this river. I just want that the water looks like a blanket. I'm using already the smallest aperture of this lens which is f22, the smallest ISO value and that's the maximum I can expose 3.2 seconds on this ND filter here. I combined now an ND16 and an ND64 filter. Now I can expose for 30 seconds. I can use an aperture of f8 and ISO 100. Now the water looks like a blanket and we don't have any waves left inside this water after we exposed for 30 seconds. Now I hope you understand the principle of using an ND filter. It can be so useful for everyone out there. Just imagine yourself standing in front of the Times Square using an ND filter, use a long exposure time with your camera on a tripod and then the only person visible on the Times Square is you. How nice would that be using an ND filter? Or for instance, if you're a filmmaker and you want to film some cool details like the leaf that I showed you here at the beginning with the blur background, you definitely need an ND filter during daylight. So apart from that, I hope you enjoyed watching this short tutorial. If you have any further question, leave a comment below. All the best and see you soon. Ciao, ciao.